statue. Justin Trudeau declared that his government is concerned that the U.S. is backsliding on women's rights after some U.S. states have moved to radically restrict abortion access. Did the Prime Minister commit a bilateral blunder by raising a sensitive issue with our largest trading partner, or is he trying to make abortion a full-fledged election issue here? When leaders like Andrew Scheer say that door is closed. Let's bring in MPs to find out. Pam DeMoff is the Parliamentary Secretary for Health and an Ontario Liberal MP. She's with me in studio. Lisa Rain is the Deputy Conservative Leader. She's in Sydney, Nova Scotia. And Nikki Ashton is an NDP MP for Manitoba. She is in the peg. Great to have all of you here. Pam DeMoff, I'll start with you. Why did the Prime Minister make this an issue um, when the Vice President was here? This is not an issue, uh, Pam, that is on our agenda. Why did he try to wedge that in with Mike Pence? So I would disagree with you that it's not on our agenda and, and it's something that we have stood up for, not just now, but previously. When we got elected, we funded uh, women's sexual and reproductive health in international aid, something that um, had been stripped away during the Harper years. We refunded that. So this isn't something new for us bringing it up, it, and it's certainly not because there's an election coming. Really? There's not? Because Andrew Scheer, what are you, what's the big concern for the Liberals? Because it's been three and a half years, you haven't done that much on this issue. Suddenly, oh, we when, have. well, suddenly when, when Mike Pence is here and you've got trade and you've got China, two Canadians detained, suddenly he's putting abortion on the, uh, on the agenda there. Like, what impact do you think Justin Trudeau is going to have on the state's abortion debate in the U.S.? Well, we're always going to speak up for human rights, and we're always going to speak up for women's rights, whether it's here or internationally. And it's something that we've spoken loudly on the whole mandate. I mean, and we've taken flack. I've taken flack personally from the Conservatives when we have been very vocal on this. When, when we stopped someone who was anti-choice from being chair of the Status of Women Committee, when 12 Conservative MPs go to a, uh, an anti-choice rally just a few weeks ago, when the Conservatives sit on their hands, when, uh, when we're talking about women's reproductive health. It's, it's, it's disturbing. This isn't new. Uh, it might be making the news for you right now, but it's not something that's well, new. Well, Lisa Ray, what, what do you make of it? First of all, was it appropriate for the Prime Minister to raise this with Mike Pence? And then you heard what uh, Pam DeMoff has said, that uh, she's concerned that this backslide could be enabled by your party. Well, I think, first of all, Canada is very different from the United States. This is a settled matter, a settled issue here in Canada. And actually, I, I am actually quite surprised that the Prime Minister is going to such lengths to try to bring a divisive topic like this to the forefront in an election when we've been very clear since 2006. And we've shown through our actions that we have no intention nor desire to open up anything to do with abortion should we form government. Nikki Ashton, do you consider it a settled matter to use Lisa Raitt's word? Jagmeet Singh tweeted out he wants to make this an issue. He actually thinks abortion should be more accessible in the country. Is it a settled matter or, well, it's different than what's going on in the U.S. Is it an issue we have to start putting back on the political agenda? Mm -hmm. Well, look, first of all, it's just not good enough to say you're pro-choice. Uh, there are many women in Canada that uh, can't actually access an abortion because of where they live, whether in rural or northern areas. One out of six hospitals only offers uh, uh, abortion uh, uh, procedures. Uh, so so uh, choice, in theory, is, uh, uh, is, is, yes, important, but we need it in practice. But look, I mean, it was a disturbing statement to hear Vice President Pence uh, uh, here in Canada as part of his joint press conference with the Prime Minister, tell us that he is proud to be part of a pro-life administration. Uh, in essence, uh, he took a platform we gave him as Canadians to impose his right-wing views, his divisive views, and frankly, views that we know in many ways embolden people that have those same kinds of views. But with all due respect, he's the, uh, you know his views. He's never hidden those views. Why? So you're saying the Prime Minister should not have brought that up? I mean, what's, what's the matter with Mike Pence? You may not agree with that view, but what's the problem? that he's expressing with his legitimate political position that you may disagree with you know that's his view yeah well, I think it's frankly uh, uh, not just disturbing, but frankly disrespectful to talk like that when you're in a country uh, uh, that has a very different approach on uh, on choice. I would have liked to have seen the Prime Minister come with a commensurate uh, uh, statement, but uh, but like I said, not only do we have to continue to defend choice, uh, we need to make sure it's it's accessible. And I am concerned that the Conservatives did not support a unanimous a call for a unanimous motion in the House this past week. They didn't stand, they didn't clap, uh, and. Uh, 
that. And to me, that is very concerning. Lisa, Ray, just to talk about that because uh, the Liberals and the NDP said, oh, the, the, that motion on, on choice, Conservatives didn't stand for it. And they basically uh, have alleged, even though Andrew Scheer, who is openly pro-life, but said, I'm not going to open this door on that. But they point out that he said, look, if backbenchers want to bring in forward bills, we can do that. They're alleging there's some backdoor way of bringing up the abortion debate. What's your view on those things? Why you didn't stand up? Yeah. Is there a backdoor to this? No, there is no backdoor to this. Everybody knows that within the Conservative Party, there are those with faith who say that abortion is not something that they are in favor of. But that is their opinion, and that is their right to have that opinion. But the reality is, is that that's not what a government does. And we've been very clear, this issue will not be opened up should we form government in October. This is not something that we're putting our minds to. And the fact that we're debating it today, I think, is just really a desperate attempt by Justin Trudeau and the Liberal government to try to talk about something else other than SNC-Lavalin or Mark Norman or the economy or the things that Canadians are consumed with right now. And if you want, by the way, if there's a question about whether or not abortions are accessible in this country, that's a matter for provinces. And everybody knows that's a matter for provinces. It's not a federal matter. Uh, well, 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 go ahead, Pan Panoff. I would well, say this: when Nikki Ashton and all of you say, "Well, there," and, and there's, and that's a fair point. There are many women who do not have access mm -hmm. to. But you guys haven't done much on to, well, we to fix that access for three and a half years. So we, we made Mifigimiso, which is the abortion pill, available for women. We allowed them to get it without an ultrasound, which means that rural and Indigenous women can have access to that pill. That's a way that the Conservative government could, def could make abortions less available for women without touching the law. There's a Conservative MP from Kitchener right now, Harold Albright, who has an, uh, is sponsoring a petition to defund abortions. It's very real right now. The Conservatives have just nominated a, a candidate in Surrey, B.C., and the, the anti-choice groups have been very vocal that they're going to nominate candidates who will support their agenda. But Andrew Scheer says he's not going to open it. You, you can defund medications. You can defund sexual reproductive health internationally. Andrew Scheer's already said he's going to turn to Harper's way of funding it. And yet I had dinner with Results Canada this week. They said it's been transformative for their work international because we've been allowed to fund that again. Uh, well, well, it looks like this debate is not going anywhere. I don't, I don't, I'm, it's certainly on the U.S. agenda. Is it coming back to Canada? We'll have to watch and see. Lisa Raitt, Nikki Ashen, and Pam DeMoff, I appreciate all three of you joining us today as always.